Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at a product by Ganzo. This knife is knife. Uh, this tool has been around for a while, but uh, I just got it recently, and I'd like to share it with you. By the way, I've been asked recently uh, by a couple of people why I hate Ganzo so much, and I asked, well, why would you say that? Well, it's because you've stopped reviewing them. Okay. <laughs> Good observation, terrible interpretation of why. I've stopped reviewing Ganzo mostly because I've reviewed all the Ganzos. <laughs> They're done. Um, so until they start producing more, I, can, I don't have anything more to review on them. Uh, so you can look through my videos and if the Ganzo is, exists, if it's legal to own in Canada, <laughs> I very, very likely have a video on it unless it's old, old, like the G600 series, uh, stuff like that. I reviewed a few of those. Those tend to be garbage. It's just, it's just frankly the way it is. Uh, so the G700 series, F700 series, the newer stuff. If you uh, find a Ganzo that is not an automatic, so no button, flip, uh, open knife, um, that's pretty much all that they make that is illegal in Canada. Um, so if you find a Ganzo knife, you know, let me know if I haven't done a review on it and I will see if I can get it. But today we're taking a look at this. This is the G301B. Um, until now, my favorite Ganzo multi-tool is the G302H. And, um, well, I can tell you already, I think it still will be after I'm done reviewing this guy. But there are some nice features on this multi-tool. We've got uh, a screwdriver kit, so a number of screwdriver tips. We've got a nice sheath, and we've got a reasonably good tool. Uh, sometimes you just want to have something black instead of, uh, you know, just silver. You want something that's much less reflective. And so we're going to take a fairly close look at this coming at you right now. I don't particularly like the fact that they did a black coating on this. The main reason, I want to just get right at it. The main reason I'm not that fond of the black coating is that some of the tools have a coating where the cutting edge is. On the blade, you can see that they ground it after they put the coating on. So that's a good thing. By the way, you get a sharpness choil in there, 440C uh, blade. You get a locking blade. That's what this piece right here is for. You pull this back. I'll just pull it back on the bottom here and you can see it move there. Oh, you just sort, you sort of need two fingers for it. I can sometimes get it with one. There you go. You saw that pulled back and I'm going to release. It's going to move forward. There you go. You pull that back and you release it, but the blade locks and having that lock is a super excellent feature. You've got this, you've got a V notch here. And again, see, look at the V notch, not again, but see how it's now coated. So this edge here is not as sharp as it was before. That's supposed to be a nice sharp V-notch for being a blade, uh, I mean, a wire stripper. I see so many wire strippers on so many multi-tools that are just garbage. It's just like a little round hole. It does nothing. At least this has got a stripping cut sharp edge on it, but it's not super sharp because it's got a coating over that sharp edge. Just like this can opener edge here, it also has been sharpened, but then... They coated it so the sharpness part of the sharpness is lost because they put a coating on it and then it's got a lifter right there um, i'm just going over all the different tools that are in here you've got a little lanyard hole tab here you've got open this up a very small um screwdriver a flat screwdriver also works good for prying something really tiny it's kind of strange that that's the only thing on that section and then here we have a scissor and this is one thing that's busted on mine the spring as you can see it 
falls over the edge here and it's supposed to stay down. Now I have reviewed, I think six different multi-tools by Ganzo and I've never seen this before. This just has not happened on any of the other ones. Uh, when you have it down in the right spot, it works good. It helps spring the knife, the scissors back open again. So I'm going to have to take this apart and bend this down and make it stay where it belongs. But that's not a good thing. You shouldn't have to do that on here. So that's all the tools on the one side. And then on the other side, we've got a saw blade, which this one really sucks. This is what really ticked me off. There's a coating on the saw blade, and that makes it work much less efficiently. Uh, it's sharpened for a pull stroke, so it cuts while you're pulling, not while you're pushing. Uh, that's okay. I don't mind that. But it is super dull because they, you know, put a coating over it. That sucks. Uh, next is this awl, and the awl has been sharpened properly after the coating's on it. So that's a good thing. There's a needle hole uh, so that you can use it for uh, sewing. Uh, I like that you've got a nice, fairly decent sharp edge on this awl. And uh, there's even a little notch there for your uh, thumb. If you need to push hard to get in something, you can hold it like that. And again, it locks in place. That's a really good thing because sometimes you have to use a lot of pressure to go through a piece of leather or something and you wouldn't want it folding closed on you in the middle of that. Okay, the next, uh, well, I won't talk about the next thing yet. We'll talk about that next thing last. We also have the serrated blade and it sucks as well because it's been coated all over the cutting edge. Dislike that a lot. I find that serrated edges are really good to have around sometimes, but when it's coated, it just doesn't work as well. And then this tool here, this square, that's where this stuff comes in. You take this adapter, it's got a square hole on one end and a hex hole on the other, and it goes on here, and then you put your screwdriver end that you choose in there. Let me close this. Oh, shouldn't have done that first. There you go. And it locks into place too. That's a really good thing. And now you have, whoa, I knocked the camera around. Now you have a screwdriver and it, you know, it's, there's a little bit of play in it. So it's not perfect. I wish there was a little less play. They could have made it with a bit less, but that's okay. But now you've got a good screwdriver that's not going to fold closed on you. And I like that feature a lot. It comes with three different Phillips sizes comes in three different standard flat sizes. It comes in five different hex sizes. So that's the uh, Allen key sizes. So very versatile, very useful. And the thing is, it's a standard size driver bit head. So you could replace these with any screws or drivers that you use the most. And that's a really good feature. Nice rubber holder inside the sheath. You can see that little bit of a line right there. That's because there's a bit of a flap there and then this goes in and that flap holds it in place and that stops it from falling forward. You would think if I went like this, it would fall forward, but it doesn't. Nice Cordura type sheath, nice belt loop right here for it. And uh, you know, then you just put this in there. I've got it open right now, but it fits very, very nicely into the sheath. And I can close this back up. And that's basically all the tools on the outside. And then we have the main tools for gripping. We've got a nice spring that keeps it open. Uh, I hate having to push pliers back open again. You've got uh, jimping along here. And this is a plastic bit here that uh, protects the other side, uh, all the mechanisms of the folding and stuff. And that's got jimping on it as well. And so you can get reasonably good grip uh, to squeeze with these pliers. They made a nice tight pivot there. So there's no play in it back and forth, up and down, side to side. Really nice close tolerances for these two jaws meeting together right there. And that's a really good thing. Uh, they line up evenly on the noses of the pliers. So that's a really good thing. You've got a nice fine grip there, and then you've got a coarse grip there, and then you've got these cutters, and those cutters are just built in, and they are just straight cutters. 
there's no uh, wire stripper head or anything in there. And But they cut fairly well. So let's go get some stuff to cut and manipulate, and uh, we'll see what we can do with this thing. So we've got this manila rope here. Let's see if we can cut that stuff. There we go. We cut through. The factory edge isn't super sharp, but it gets the job done. Uh, let's check the... Uh, we've got uh, the serrated blade out here now. Let's see if we can cut this manila rope, manila rope with this. Oh, I hit the light there. And it's a whole lot harder. You would think it should be easier with a serrated knife to cut through this stuff. And it would be if it didn't have paint all over the cutting edge. So I'm going to have to sharpen all of that off before this is useful. Something that won't happen if you buy the version that Gearbest has right now, the silver version. It's this black version that really sucks. I found out my other problem here with this spring. It's a very simple problem. This screw was loose. So because this screw was loose, there was a lot of play that just made this round spring easily just spring out of the way. So as you can see clearly, you know, I can do what I want to right now, uh, play with it, be rough with it, and it just keeps working properly with that spring. So all I have to do is tighten that up a little bit and still functional, you know, the locking mechanism still works and everything. So that's all it is. So I'm going to use some VC3 by Vibratite there so that that doesn't keep coming loose because there's, uh, you know, nothing else to really keep that from coming loose. So that's what we'll do. Let's demonstrate a tiny bit of paper cutting or whatever kind of cutting we have here. Here I've got some plastic. Uh, you can see that it'll cut plastic okay. All the way across no problem and if it can cut plastic okay it'll cut paper okay as well so here's some paper so it's a reasonably good scissor uh, my mistake with that spring there and I should have checked if these were loose or not so I've got some factors here that are good some that are not oh some of you guys might be wondering about my finger um, I just had to get some uh, prick test for some blood work uh, for some iron and I don't know, it feels like I've got an infection in the little prick that they did. Um, so I don't know if they didn't clean my finger properly or if I got it dirty afterwards. You know, pr more than likely that I got that little prick hole dirty afterwards. And uh, so that's why I've got the bandaid on here because it's just something touches the end of my finger and it just makes me go, ah. And, you know, I don't like having a video where I'm working all of a sudden, ah, ah. <laughs> It's not really painful. It just is a, one of those little surprising shocks that you get sometimes with infections. So there you go. Here's this device, the G301B. Generally, I've really given um, quite good reviews to the Ganzo tools, these full-size multi-tools. And I stand by those reviews. Uh, but this one, this black one, I say if you want to get a black multi-tool by Ganzo, um, just think twice and get yourself one of these satin ones, the steel colored ones anyways. Uh, this one, the G301 at Gearbest is on sale right now for 35 US dollars, 34.99. And uh, that's not a bad price for what you get. Uh, but if you have just a little bit more money, get the G301-H because it has replaceable cutters right here in the pliers. So they're nice... Um, uh, carbide cutters that look, I'll, I'll show them to you. And then that way you'll see them. And that's better than me just saying something. The G302H. And this is a better tool in a lot of ways. The uh, pivoting feels better. See how this makes noise? No noise. <laughs> just everything about the G302H is made better and there's those screw heads right there that are replaceable. Not the screw heads, the screws for the carbide cutters. And uh, here's the carbide cutters. And you can buy them like this for several dollars. Hopefully Gearbest still has them. If they do, I'll put a link to it. I'll put a link to this review on my uh, uh, on the end of this video too, so you can see this. This is what I recommend if you're looking for a multi-tool. 
it's just better in every single way. And it's still not that stupid expensive. It, yeah, it costs a little bit more than this, but not an awful lot. It's the same basic size, um, but it's uh, it's just better in every imaginable way that you can measure it. Um, the cutting edge is super sharp. Like I can I could prick my fingers and make them bleed just by touching on here because they've sharpened it very well. I think they've just taken a whole lot more time on every single aspect of uh, this device uh, compared to the black one. And it's just a very, very good thing. The saw blade on the black one is just, you know, basically you need to get a file in there and you need to sharpen each and every one of these uh, on the black one to get them to work. But on here, it's functional right from the start. And they've even gone so far as to uh, make the spine more narrow than the uh, teeth here. So that means uh, when you're cutting through something, the uh, blade won't pinch. It's a reasonable device. Um, if you're really stuck for money and this is the only thing you can afford, uh, by the way, it's the three G301 in satin. If that's all you can afford, get that. But if you can really afford to step up to the G302H, um, it's worth that extra little bit of money. It really, really is. So thanks for watching my little video here. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and all the other good stuff you guys do for Canadian Cutting Edge. And remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.